comfortable. So check for comfort and lastly you expose the patient up to your knee, normally for <laughs> chest, <laughs> then you just expose the chest up to your knee. You don't want it to be from you slightly. Then using tangential lighting, inspect the jugular veins on the right side. Usually the best vein for analysis is the right internal jugular. First, identify the external jugular vein. If it's not visible, compression just above the clavicle may distend it. Then find the pulsations of the internal jugular vein. Here they are seen between the two attachments of the sternomastoid muscle. To estimate jugular venous pressure and the pressure in the right atrium, first identify the highest point of pulsation in the internal jugular vein. Next, find the sternal angle. Then measure the vertical distance between that point and the sternal angle in centimeters. 
The number of centimeters is an estimate of jugular venous pressure. When recording this estimate, also document the angle at which the bed is elevated. In this patient, the internal jugular venous pressure is one centimeter above the sternal angle, with the head of the bed elevated 30 degrees. In another patient, the pulsations of the internal jugular vein are easy to see, especially during expiration. Note their soft, rapid, undulating quality with two elevations and two troughs per heartbeat. Compare them to the single thrust of the carotid artery pulsations. Check the lower limbs for pitting edema. So, so we should... 